The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes ago until that opening bell. And we got a little bit of a mixed market going on right now. You're looking at S&P futures negative by 11 points, trading at 32.26. Dow futures negative by 135 points, trading 26,580. NASDAQ futures in the positive by seven points, 10,898. We got the Russell this morning, negative by eight points, trading at 1439, jumping around to commodities. Crude oil, negative 25 cents, holding about $40 right now at $40.07 pennies. Gold contract, down $15 at 1861. Been a tough week for gold. Lows yesterday of 1851. We're about $10 above that price level. Silver contract, negative 39 cents at 2281. Jumping over to notes and bonds. Pretty muted action. We're just hanging out, folks. 139.22 is the price it likes to navigate to. We're one tick away from there. 139.21, up about two ticks on the 10 year. 30 year, up about eight ticks right now at 177.07. We're looking at a 10 year yield right now of 0 0.656%. 0 0.6, 0 0.66% has been the number on that 10 year. And just for some context here, we'll pull it up. We're looking at the 10 year in price. There's your 10 year in price on a daily. And I mean, look at that chart, folks. We've been just navigating right at 139.22 since basically the March highs. You spiked briefly above that level. We came back up there in April. We came back up there again in April. And we've just been ticking around. We made it as high early August of a price of 140.13, but it didn't take long. And we've just been oscillating right around this line, 139.21 right now, excuse me, in that 10 year note. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping into the stories of Friday action so far. One of the stories catching my eyes, talking about outflows of stocks. Third biggest outflow ever. It's a Bloomberg article here this morning talking about the U.S. stock funds bled $25.8 billion in the week through September 23rd, according to Bank of America and EPFR Global Data, and a reversal from the previous week's biggest inflow in more than two years. Talk about some volatility. Investors exited the hottest sector of the rebound, pulling the most money out of tech funds since June of 2019. Uh, S&P index is, of course, is on course for its fourth straight weekly drop, longest losing streak in more than a year. And when you get into the numbers here, in a flight to haven assets, investors are pulling out of equities as well as cash to put their money into debt and gold. Bond funds received $1.3 billion in the most recent week, while the precious metals attracted $1.3 four billion in inflows the most since the flash crash in early august according to bank of america stocks overall bled 22.8 billion the most since march pretty interesting that goldman out so i talked about some of the election probabilities that may come into play and and it's possible uh goldman out there though saying the risks of a delayed u.s election result are quote unquote overestimated all right so we're putting out all the information a delayed outcome is, quote unquote, a tail risk. OK, a combination of early results, voter turnout, county level data and the high correlation of polling errors across states suggest investors will have enough information on election night to determine the likely victor, wrote econ economist Michael Cahill and Alec Phillips in a note Thursday. A number of states, including some key battlegrounds, allow votes to be processed and counted well before Election Day, they noted. Now, here's the thing. That's true. OK, but we went over it yesterday in the program talking about Pennsylvania, 20 electoral day, uh, electoral votes at stake. They are not Wisconsin, Michigan. They are not allowed to count votes uh, until Election Day. So it's nice to see that that's a an outlier. They're calling it. It seems fairly likely that there should be enough information on election night from states that will report results quickly for the market to be able to gauge the likely winner. The pair wrote, in other words, the S&P can trade the likely outcome even if the AP does not call the race. Uh, there's a lot of optimism in there, folks. When you have, I mean, I mean, 
when you're when you're talking about trading the likely outcome, okay, but you're also going to have an uncalled presidential election potentially with the president out there again stumping to saying that he probably already won if that's what it indicates. And even if you can make a statistical estimation of the number of ballots that may come in in a state like Pennsylvania or what it is, uh, nonetheless, they're talking about that that's an overestimated uh, fear right now. And I hope that they're right, folks. We'll see what happens. All right. 8.30 a.m., always a good time to do the program. We get a lot of data that comes out this morning. We get durable goods, durable goods rising just 0.4 percent in August. The number they were looking for was 1.5 percent increase. So that just coming out at 8.30. We'll see how that's hitting the market. We get the S&Ps right now down about 14 points. We had some serious volatility yesterday, right? We'll zoom it in. Wednesday, we slide from 33.20 down to a low of about 30. We'll find that low. A low about 32.20, I was going to say, yeah. 32.20, yeah, like 100 points, basically. The S&Ps traded down on Wednesday. Thursday action, we open dip below 3,200 briefly and quite an acceleration higher until about 145 in the afternoon. We're trading at 3,268. And just like that, folks, we trade all the way down to a low of about 3,219. Overnight, you make it up to almost 3,260. Things look pretty rosy. I mean, these moves are just becoming so often that they seem normal. Meanwhile, we traded from at one in the morning a price point of 32.57 down to a price point at just about seven in the morning of 32.06. You're talking about 50 S&P points. And just since then, the bounce we've gotten since seven in the morning, you trade from 32.06 up to 32.30. We're currently down about 15 S&P points right now on the S&P. Checking in on the VIX this morning, we got above 30 again briefly this morning. We were above 30 yesterday early. We were at 31.18 on Monday. Currently sitting at about 29.48 on that volatility index. All right, jumping around to other stories out there with headlines, talking about uh, potentially, what do we have? Stocks going on. Costco. So Costco, decent numbers here. When you check this out, earnings of $3.04 a share, 20 cents above estimates. Revenue also beating forecasts. How about the comp store sales? 11.4% compared to a 7.8% consensus estimate of the analysts. Costco also saw digital sales jump from 91, jump 91% from a year earlier. You would think that that would send the stock higher, right folks? We live in very interesting times because that is not what happened at all. You saw a quick pop, but then talk about short-lived, we're traded from 347 down to about lows of 338, we'll call it, we're trading up at a about 340 right now on Costco. You're down about $7 from context on where the stock has been. You go back to pre-COVID, we're trading at about 320. Some of these stocks never quite got punished and it would make sense, right? In a COVID world, the market figured out quicker than on many stocks that a company like Costco was not gonna suffer as everybody flocked to Costco to fill up their house with goods. Um, but you're trading this morning at about 340. You were trading at 325 before COVID. You put up some pretty strong numbers there for Costco, but that was priced in, and uh, they're trading lower this morning on decent earnings for Costco. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. See what else we have on tap for Friday trading. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative 13, NASDAQ negative by four, the Dow negative 148, and the Russell negative eight. Quite a week. We'll pull up the 15-minute chart on the S&P. Friday's action last Friday, we were trading at 33.63. We're about 140 points below that price level right now. Lows in the S&P for the week made yesterday at 31.98. It's been a dicey week uh, as any time. I mean, look at these accelerations lower, right? Mon uh, Friday, accelerate lower. Monday, accelerate, accelerate lower. We did get a reprieve on Tuesday. Wednesday, it all happened overnight, and the sell-off really accelerated, talking about 100 points, as I mentioned at the top of the program. From 7 a.m., we're trading at 33.20. By the end of the day, we're trading at 32.20. Now, we've just kind of been bouncing around. Yesterday, quite a pop. But when you look at this chart, I see negative action, folks. I see negative action on Friday, negative action on Monday, a reprieve on Tuesday, no real huge acceleration, a cliff on Wednesday, Thursday, it seemed like things were going to get a little better, but by the end of the day, people said, no, 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 we're not going to be uh, long overnight coming into Friday. And guess what, folks? Overnight starts at about 1 in the morning. We trade from almost 32.60 down to the lows of about 32.06. You're talking about 50, 55 S&P points. It's becoming the norm because it is the norm. Uh, but watch out for this volatility. we got the presidential election, I believe, 39 days out from right now. All right, what else we got going on in the markets? Jumping around to stocks with action this morning. We'll start it off with AstraZeneca. So they received partial immunity from the EU regarding potential liability related to its COVID-19 vaccine candidate, according to Reuters. Drug maker said to have received that backing due to asking a lower price for the treatment. Uh, so they're negotiating over there. You know, hopefully over in our country, Things getting a little political with the vaccine. And the biggest problem, folks, is that it's got to be trusted. You know, you can't just create a vaccine and have the world take it. It's got to be trusted. And you're actually seeing polls shift away from trust for that vaccine. So hopefully uh, things stay the course and people can trust what's going on because that's the most important part, myself included. Um, you know, if you think about taking that. Novavax began a late stage trial of its COVID-19 vaccine candidate in the UK in partnership with the government's vaccines task force. 10 to 1,000 participants, ages 18 to 84, are expected to enroll. Jump on over to those two. 
stocks. There's AstraZeneca trading lower yesterday with the market. This morning, we're basically flat at 54.33. And Novavax getting a pop on that news up to about 108.86 right now from 102.44 yesterday as they began their late stage trial. Harley Davidson, so they're close to a distribution deal with India's Hero Motor. According to sources, Harley had announced yesterday that it would stop sales and shut its India manufacturing plant, but the potential deal would allow Hero to import and sell Harley motor motorcycles in India. Hog, Harley, they've been in trouble for a while. Just kind of trends in, in, the, in the country, at least speaking to the U.S., not really um, Harley friendly. My dad had a nice Harley. I used to ride on the back of it, loved it, um, but but we are not a, a Harley country anymore in terms of people, uh, whether it's, you know, just talking about Kawasaki, Toyota, the bikes, um, not really. It's, it's an older generation, and they're having trouble finding their foothold in the younger generation. You're up there at $63 in March of 17, and it's been a one-way rocket ship to the bottom. We made lows of $14 for COVID. Uh, we're up to 23, but you can see the pain they've even had this month going from almost $30 and shaving basically 20 plus percent off their price tag to 23.10 for Harley Davidson as they try and revert to some of their fine businesses. All right, over to real estate. Piper Sandler initiating coverage of both online real estate web websites with overweight ratings as Americans relocate in record numbers in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. Folks, I would encourage you to check out Florida. I did from Boston. Love my hometown of Boston. Miss it tremendously. Uh, but I don't miss six to seven months of snow and cold and gray. Uh, I do miss some cool weather, some beautiful foliage that they're getting up there right now. But I don't miss the state taxes in Massachusetts as well. Uh, Redfin, RDFN. I mean, there's now this is a monthly. Let me zoom in on even a 15 minute. Uh, so a little bit of a pop on that news from 46.43 to 47.40. And what was it? Zillow. Yeah, ZG, Zillow. You're trading up a bit as well from 97.44. Putting these on a daily just for some context. You want to talk about a rocket ship from 60 to 18. The world figures out that real estate's going to rock and roll with low interest rates here to stay. And you go from 18 to $100 on Zillow and Redfin. Pretty similar action from 30 to $10 up trading 46.43. Uh, as of the close on yesterday. All right, Apple. So the EU is going to appeal the July court decision that favored Apple in a dispute over the tax breaks that Apple received in Ireland. The EU's top court will rule on whether that tax deal constituted illegal state aid and whether a nearly $15 billion tax bill for Apple should be reinstated. Always remarkable how long these battles take place. I'm, I feel like that's been going on for years. It probably has. Cruise lines. See, here's a high-risk wager if you want one. Barclays upgraded the cruise line stocks to overweight from equal weight. The firm said that although the call may be early, they should bold that one, folks. Let's bold that one. Although the, the call may be early, and it may be and yeah, maybe not, um, the risk-reward profile is attractive and anticipating that the CDC um, may make positive comments about a return to cruising when it addresses the issue within a few days. Now, here's what I will say about this. No matter what the CDC says, folks, it doesn't mean that they're going to start coming back in thousands to jump on cruise ships before COVID is over. Now, here's the other thing I'll say, though, and you're getting a little bit of a pop this morning, but check out this chart from 52 down to eight, back to 1374. The world will come back to normal, okay? And when it does come back to normal, these cruise ships will trade positive. Um, and, and maybe there's something to be said that, and you see the acceleration a little bit higher in a 15 minute for Carnival. We'll zoom in on Norwegian a little bit higher as well. Uh, the market might be able to price in some growth, but they got a long ramp up to normal activity on a cruise ship. They might be literally one of the last sectors of the economy that's able to pick back up normal business because, you know, flying, traveling, going to a hotel, going to a restaurant. If one person in that restaurant tests positive, you don't get locked down for potentially weeks or months. That's the, the fear that I have about going on a cruise ship, right? That even if you're testing people, 
folks, I've taken a rapid test. I got sick about a month ago, thankfully not COVID, took a rapid test, really went into the specifics. Um, rapid tests, especially rapid tests, at least the one they have right now, can yield false negatives because the, the virus might not be showing up fast enough, especially at the early stages of the virus, that you can get almost a 15 to 20 percent false negative rate in terms of you take the test, you're actually positive, you don't have enough in your system to yield a positive result. Uh, all that has to happen on a cruise ship is one person makes it on. Uh, I think there's a lot better areas in this market right now that you can be in, regardless of what the CDC says, because I find it very difficult to see that business coming back anywhere near normal anytime soon. All right, jumping back to the S&Ps, we get the NASDAQ now futures. We're getting a little bit of a pop. S&Ps up to almost 32.30. NASDAQ 100 futures, there's your acceleration. We traded from about 10,813. We're up almost 100 points from 7 a.m. this morning at 10,904. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back, finish up the program, see what else we have on tap for that Friday trading. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P's minus eight. NASDAQ futures up 22 now. Jumping around to what else we have going on. Wall Street, they're getting ready for election night and a potential trading surge. One of the things that's really come to light during the volatility spikes that we've had 
is whether you had Robin Hood going down for a period of time. You had TD Ameritrade at one point. You had, uh, I'm not sure if any of the others were dramatic. Robin Hood was the most dramatic, down for multiple days on periods of super high volatility. Make sure if you're exposed to the market, folks, uh, you have some time. Maybe you get maybe you get a second brokerage out there if you're really worried, because I'm not sure we've ever seen anything like what we're going to see on election night. And uh, past history has not been kind to some of these brokerages and how they handle that volatility. Wall Street, and they're talking about election night. Financial firms are telling staff and clients that this year will be different with coronavirus fearful voters relying on mail-in ballots. The U.S. Postal Service already beleaguered by delivery problems. We'll jump to a U.S. Postal Service article in a moment. Election results could be delayed by days or longer. Trump said this week. He wouldn't commit to a peaceful transfer, but they talk about in here that the numbers that they're talking about, uh, people are deploying more infrastructure and questions come from above. How close to capacity are we? What latency are we having? Um, they're planning for it. Doesn't mean that they'll get it done. They already should have had it done. Um, you really look at what's happening here, um, that they see trading volumes. This is what I want to highlight. Are likely to spike to as much as eight times their normal levels on November Number third, eight times. I'd say that might even be undercutting it. Eight times what's the normal level of an overnight volume session or just eight times the normal levels you might see on an election night um, because it's going to be a big one, folks. And U.S. Postal Service. So you have the, the U.S. Postal Service uh, general, postmaster general, saying those those machines we, uh, we, we destroyed, they can't be put back together. Sorry, can't do that. Be aware, folks, it's going to get dicey around this election. You know, that's the guy that's running the U.S. Postal Service at a time when we have record mail-in ballots saying that we broke down all these machines, and even though a judge tells us to put them back together, we can't do it. Sorry. See what happens. Get ready for that volatility, and get ready for Larry Pesavento. He's coming up live next, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> 